Good morning, everybody, and welcome, and welcome to this Ocean Set uh, side event as part of the wider OEE 2021 conference. Uh, we're very glad that we were able to have this as part of the wider conference because the theme of the conference over the last few days, where it's been meeting physically as Brussels, has really been on collaboration and coordination. It's a theme that's come up over and over and over again in all the discussions we've had, be it on policy, on operations, on technical developments, and so on. Um, and, and the message that was really saying is that developing a new industry and decarbonizing Europe is just too big a challenge for any one individual, any one organization, or even for any one country to do it alone. And, and I think Ocean said is really a project that takes that talk and puts it into practice. And that's not only because of the tasks that Ocean Set do, which are inherently collaborative. We're collecting and analyzing data from all corners of, the, of, of, of Europe, where there's ocean energy, based on collaboration between partners in these different countries. But it's also because of the wider collaboration and cooperation that's facilitated by Ocean Set. Uh, there's a phrase that if you can't if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And I think that applies very much certainly to a sector and the data that's generated and the analysis that comes from that ocean set work uh, is critical to getting wider collaboration and structure on the ocean energy sector in Europe. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason why we're doing a huge amount of work at the moment as well to make sure that there is a successor to ocean set so we can continue this work for another three years. So very glad to have this web, web this, this webinar here, this side event here. Uh, it really fits in with the wider theme of the conference. And with that, I will hand over to the chair of the implementation working group of the set plan for ocean energy, Jan Maria Sinino. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for this presentation. And uh, yes, I mean, I will just give you some very basic information about the ocean set project, but a little bit before what the set plan is. So I will try to share my screen. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Good. So, um, I mean, actually uh, I'm the chair of the, the strategic energy technological planning and in particular, the implementation working group for the ocean energy. I work in Italy at the ENEA, that is the Italian National Agency for New Technology, Energy and Sustainable Economic Development. But just let me give you very, very few basic information about the European strategic plan. Actually, uh, as you know, the world is undergoing, a, a, to say, a radical transformation uh, in the way the energy is produced and used, shifting to a cleaner and more efficient energy system. So uh, the European countries, together with the Industry Research Center and European Commission, are working all together to speed up this transformation through the European Strategic Energy Technological Plan, what we call the SET Plan. Uh, the SET Plan can be I have to say, consider it as the technological pillar of the EU energy and climate policy since 2008. In other words, the SET plan is the key tool for aligning European and national clean energy research and innovation priorities. Um, as you can see from this picture, the SET plan has identified six priorities or we can say six ambitions. One of these ambitions is to become the world leader in renewable energy. And to meet this goal, the European Union must lead the development of the next generation of renewable energy technologies. And among these technologies, the EU has identified also the ocean energy. So in particular for the ocean energy in 2017, was created a temporary working group composed of focal point representative of the member states, EU commission, the main energy, ocean energy stakeholders at EU level to identify the main action needed to boost the ocean energy sector in Europe. Uh, the temporary uh, working group reached actually an agreement on common objectives for the ocean energy sector. These objectives are to bring ocean energy to commercial deployment, to drive down the levelized cost of energy, to maintain and grow the Europe's leading position in ocean energy and reinforce the European industrial technological base 
uh, thereby creating economic growth and jobs in Europe and allowing Europe to compete on a global scale stage. So to turn this aspiration into operational action, actually in March 2018, the temporary working group published the first implementation plan. This is actually a sort of a list of detailed actions to be put in place by member state regions and of course the European uh, Commission. And um, to monitor the progresses of this action, Always in 2018 was created an implementation working group. The actual implementation working group that is chaired by me and Tim Urs from the Wave Energy Scotland is composed of 12 EU member states plus Norway and UK. The working group is also composed of the main ocean energy stakeholders at EU level, the Ocean Energy Europe, in particular, the European Energy Research Alliance and ATP Ocean, and of course, also DG Mare, DG Energy and GRC from the European Commission. To align the action plan with the most recent EU policy and research agenda, the implementation working group made a sort of, we can say, restyling of the action plan. The plan was presented just last month by the Commission during the General Set Plan Conference. It will be published on the CETIS webpage in the coming days. So please have a look at the website before Christmas to download the most recent action plan for the ocean energy. And as you can see, just uh, here, I mean, the, the, the most, let's say, uh, important targets identified by the last action plan are, I mean, what we, we, we can read by in, in the slides. So we are these, uh, let's say, more very challenging targets. The first one is just to put in place 100 megawatt of deployed wave and tile capacity in uh, European waters by 2025. And there are one gigawatt of deployed wave and tidal capacity in Europe by 2030. And we have also some LCOA targets and uh, that are again, very challenging. The LCOE for tidal stream energy should be reduced to 0.1 euro per kilowatt hour in 2030. And the same level for the wave energy, but in 2035. So these are very challenging. But I mean, our action plan is su suggesting how to reach these very challenging targets. And uh, the, um, the re re revised plan as in the, the previous one outline, uh, outlines also three high level action. The first one is the coordination between member states and region to share and track critical information annually that will demonstrate the clear development of the ocean energy technologies. Collaboration between member state regions and the European Commission to ensure the effective use of appropriate blending, if possible, of course, found to drive large scale deployment and the need for annual monitoring of progresses with the progress review carried out at the end of each phase to determine the go no go to the next phase actually of the uh, the the implementation plan and uh, to to reach those let's say targets uh, most of the work has been done by the ocean set each 2020 project so in 2019 was uh, uh, just uh, sent this uh, this uh, was launched this project that is assisting the implementation working group, especially in the monitoring phase. So uh, this is just to give you some very brief information about the ocean set project. So it's a 1 million euro project that is going to finish at the end of this month. And uh, hopefully there will be a sort of ocean set two project in the coming months that still will help to uh, the, the implementation working group for the second phase of the implementation plan. And uh, here you see also some very basic information collected by the, the, the ocean set project. So here you see the total number of projects that are now running all around Europe and uh, for wave devices, tidal devices or mixed, let's say, 
devices. And here you see also some metrics that we are collecting all around Europe about which member states have an ocean energy budgets or which, let's say, member states are, I mean, as test facility and so on. But uh, in the next two presentation, we will go very deep inside the ocean set monitoring phase and uh, you will know more about these numbers. But uh, just uh, before to go to the next two, three presentation, actually, let me just show you a video that presents the ocean set, uh, uh, the, the set plan and the ocean set, of course, project to Europe, to the commission. So here you see, I don't know if you can see, you can see this movie. Can you see the? John Mario, we're, we're still on the PowerPoint at the moment. Sorry. Now? Good, thanks. Good. So this was the video, and I think that we can move now um, very quickly to the, the 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 presentation. So I leave now the floor to Patricia uh, to uh, Paul Rachel from the from the uh, Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, CA, that will give us a review of the result of the third annual survey addressed by the member states and from the Ocean Set project. So. Uh, power, the, um, Richard, the, the, the floor is yours, please. Good morning, I'm very much going to share this presentation and try and play it in uh, full mode if I can. So is that looking good for everybody? Great, thanks, Jean Maria. So, as Jean Maria pointed out, um, the Ocean Set project is the project that sort of does the day to day running and of uh, the work of the implementation plan for the ocean energy um, set plan. We're looking at uh, trying to assess the progress of the ocean energy sector across Europe and trying to see which funded projects are um, delivering successful reports. And to do that, we gather data um, from member states and developers. So um, how the member states and technology um, developers data is collected is through surveys that we send out annually 
John Maria was mentioning there in his presentation that one of the objectives was to share and track critical information annually, and this is how we do it under the Ocean Set project. So we send out member state survey and get information from member states on sort of high level information, which is the presentation that I'll take you through this morning. And that high end level information is just around, you know, funding, which projects are being supported, the number of projects, and we feed that into um, information for the European Commission. And then we also do a separate survey for um, developers in the field and ask them quite specific technical information. So in the presentation after this, Anna will take you through some of the findings of uh, that survey for this year. The two surveys are put together, the data from the two surveys are put together and then fed into a couple of internal reports for the European Commission, but also published in an annual report, which is published at the start of, um, of each year. So we're expecting our next annual report, the third Ocean Set annual report, to be published around um, March of 2022. Uh, John Maria showed us these slides. These are the kind of um, pieces of information we're looking at. These slides are from 2019. We can also look back at 2018 and we'll create an infographic um, in the coming weeks and months to cover 2020. So we can look at the three years then uh, side by side. And John Maria pointed out there the, the sorts of uh, high level information we get, like which member states have policies, the amount of funding, the amount of projects, that kind of thing. And we'll do an infographic as well for the developers um, with that more specific technical information, for example, um, uh, front runners in the various um, sectors like horizontal axis turbines in tidal. Um, there isn't one in wave so far, but there are a number of technologies that um, are included in the analysis that we did for 2019. And then looking at other specific things like CapEx, OpEx and the annual availability for prototypes. Uh, moving on to 2020, so what I'll go through in the next couple of slides are um, initial findings for the reference year 2020. Um, this is sort of quite high level, top level information. When we have um, looked at the data, double checked it, cleansed it, then it will start to go into the annual report. So some of this information might change, but um, not too much. Uh, this year, 14 member states again responded to us, so we have 100% cooperation across the member states, and thank you for that. I'm saying member states in this presentation, but obviously with um, Norway and with the UK, it is we will be more correctly calling them member states and partnering non-EU countries. Um, 12 countries completed one of those surveys that I mentioned for member states data. One partially completed the survey, that was Cyprus, they just couldn't answer some of the questions at the end. And then one didn't complete a survey. Finland came back to us and said, look, we actually have no activity to report, so we won't complete a survey for this year. But otherwise, um, everyone sent in a survey. And then 11 countries were able to provide information on projects that are active in their country in the ocean energy sector in 2020. The projects that were reported back to us, there were 141 projects that were reported back that are uh, supported in ocean energy across Europe. WAVE again is way out in front with 82 um, projects. There are just 28 tidal projects across Europe. And then we have 31 that are categorized as ocean or other. So ocean projects might be projects that aren't necessarily around the technology of um, ocean energy, but might be around support, might be around financing for projects, that kind of thing. So we don't count them the same as um, wave and tidal projects. Then 11 member states uh, reported that they were funding projects that are TRL 7 or above. So that's 34 projects in total. And um, the TRL 7 or above projects are the ones that will go on to be uh, surveyed as part of the developer survey, which Anna will talk about in a moment. We also ask member states um, about the funding and the costs of each project. So the total grant agreed, um, the total agreed grant aid in 2020 across the sector was around 334 million. And the applicant and private funding then came to about 162 million. So the total project cost was 507 million, around a half a billion um, for the total project costs across those 141 projects in Europe. 
we can look as well at the stages that the projects um, are at. So we can see that on average, it takes around just over two and a half years for a project to go from uh, beginning to completion. And it's a little longer in tidal. So it takes about just over three years in tidal, about two and a half in wave. And um, tidal tends to start at a slightly higher stage than wave. On average, these are median figures again, but we can see looking at all of the projects, this seems to be the, the trend. So in general, wave tends to start around stage two and then finish a stage higher around stage three and tidal starts a little higher and finishes a little higher. There's a column missing there, but that column that's hidden, I don't know if you can see it, I can't see it on my screen, but that's just the uplift of roughly one um, stage uh, for wave and tidal um, and uh, an uplift of around one for all projects. I just wanna go into a little bit more detail on the, um, let's see if I can move this just a little. Oh, great, okay. Uh, just to go into a little more detail on the stages. So these the, the metrics that we use here for the stages are based on the task 12 IEOES um, metrics. So stage zero being concept creation and stage five being the, the commercial scale demonstration in small array or TRL nine, the highest TRL level. And we can see that at the beginning of projects, the, the bulk of projects are around the one, two or three stage. There's about 7% in, in zero and obviously um, none at stage five. When we look then at the end of the projects, we can see the, the uplift there. So they're at the end of the projects, no more um, projects are expected to be in the concept creation stage in stage one or at TRL one. And they've all pushed up so the, the the majority now are in stage two three or four with five percent expected to finish at stage five the commercial scale demonstration we ask member states as well um how much budget they commit to ocean energy and then how much is actually spent on ocean energy and uh, for 2020 we found that just um uh, over 28 and a half million had been committed to ocean energy by member states and the spend was just short of 31 million and you can see the breakdown there of the this is the breakdown of the total project costs where that's going over half is going to wave about a fifth to tidal and then other projects those ocean ones I mentioned like support or finance the budget and spend figures though are a little bit difficult to calculate and we can we can guess that they are a little bit higher than the ones on the screen there i just want to show you how the data comes in for the um for the uh budgets it, it comes in like this so some people give us an exact figure some people give us estimates and then there are quite a few unknowns so uh when an unknown figure comes in sometimes it's just the the data is not available or um, also what can happen is the ocean energy budget can be in a wider budget in the member states. So for example, it can be in a general renewable energy budget. So it's difficult to extract that out and say exactly how much was committed towards ocean energy. So we have given the figure 28.6 and 30.91, but it's likely to be a little bit higher. It's just unfortunately, some of the data is, uh, is as yet unknown. So to move from the quantitative to the qualitative results, um, there are 10 member states uh, funding supports for national and regional programs for OE. Three are not, according to the data sent back to us. And then rather than ask again some questions uh, that we asked over the last two years, we just asked member states to compare with 2019, has there been any change? And when it came to policy mechanisms, they reported, no, there hasn't been any change. Um, Last year, two member states said that they had a dedicated ocean energy policy and seven said they had a general renewable energy pol um, policy that included ocean energy and that has not changed. We also asked about test infrastructure because in 2019, 80% of member states said they had a sufficient test st structure. This year, that's 95% um, say we still believe that our test facilities are sufficient to support the sector. Just Wales um, within the UK response said that they, they didn't feel it was um, sufficient, but they said two new zones are coming online, so that's likely to change. So there's a very high level there of um, feeling that the facilities are sufficient. 
And again, we asked, uh, compared to 2019, have there been changes to the test facilities? And five member states reported that there had been uh, changes to test facilities. Those member states were the UK, Sweden, Netherlands, Spain, and Cyprus. We asked then compared to 2019, when we noticed that there was quite a long time for consenting, had any member states taken steps to speed up consenting? And one has actually inside and outside, that one is Portugal. And then inside the test site, again, Wales said that they had um, taken some steps to speed up consenting, but overall the UK response was no. And there was no change to the 2019 results regarding port facilities, grid access, the supply, supply chain either. So these 80%, 90% and 90% of um, satisfaction around uh, the port facilities being good or adequate, the grid access being good or adequate, and the supply chain being well complemented by suppliers um, from other sectors, uh, they, they hadn't changed compared to 2019 results. So we can take it that because those haven't changed, the, the level of satisfaction hasn't either. We did ask and we were told there were no changes to that view. There was a new question this year on the uh, IEA OES framework for ocean energy technology. There is um, a new framework was published since last year's uh, survey. So we asked if member states felt that was suitable for adoption. Nine said yes and four said no. And when it comes to writing the annual report, we'll put in the comments that each member state gave about that. So they gave specific reasons why they felt the, um, the new framework was either suitable or not suitable for adoption. So the next steps then are to continue cleansing the data, continue going back and looking for any clarifications that are necessary and uh, making sure we have as accurate a set of data as we can. We will give our internal reports to the European Commission in February of next year, and then we'll publish the annual report, which will have much more detailed analysis of everything I've just gone through in March, and will also include the um, developers survey information. These are the names of some of the people who are involved in OceanSet. If you'd like to reach out to anybody or get engaged, and I'm at um, rachel.power at seai.ie. I'll hand you back to Jan Maria. Thanks, Jan Maria. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rachel, for your presentation. And um, actually, now we move on on an, another presentation. So now we we will have a more, let's say, complete overview of the developers. So no more the single member states, but the developers. And I've also to say to the the, um, the attendees that you can put your uh, questions on the. On, on the website and at the end of the three presentations we will try to answer your questions so please put your questions in the uh, on, on on the chat now the floor to Anna Andrade from Portugal that works at uh, the Directorate General of Energy and Geology in Portugal Anna the floor is yours Good uh, morning. You... Yes, I know this. Are you? Can you see this? My screen. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I am uh, going to present the initial results results of the developer survey, which was delivered to twenty seven project owners identified in member state survey as. Um, as a valid project to receive it, uh, being the criterion, the criteria uh, cr um, having in development a device or a subsystem for a device of ocean energy, wave or tidal stream, and um, and uh, being a project as a uh, Rachel has has said in a tier higher tier level. Uh, and being active in 2020, actually we are collecting data from 2020. And of course, it's a project running in a European Union and partnering in non-European country, which corresponds to uh, running in one of the 11 countries represented in the Ocean Energy Implementation Working Group, which have provided information for the member states survey. I will cover these topics in this presentation that Francesca just move on, starting by 
uh, the distribution among wave and tidal of the project addressed, uh, which has responded. So just to clarify, the analysis I am presenting to Chris is based on the responses collected so far. We are still waiting some answers, but so far we will present results from 18 projects, six from tidal stream, which uh, corresponds, uh, I apologize. <laughs> I have uh, changed the tidal stream is the smaller percentage, wave 12 is the higher percentage and uh, on, on the legends. We, they all belong to the European Union countries. Tidal is split among European countries and non-European countries, um, uh, partly non-European countries. We have got in our sample smaller, what we have called smaller scale devices, which are devices with the nominal power um, have of less than 0.1 megawatts, larger scale devices with uh, uh, rated power higher than 0.1 megawatts, but also technology hybrids, which uh, uh, make a conjugation between wave or tidal and wind or floating solar, and in certain cases with some off-grid application that uses the energy produced locally. And we also have some subsystems projects which are developing technology for a device project. Those projects uh, were mainly made through consortium, and in case of consortium, mainly by multi-member state partnerships, both in wave and tidal, but also a, a good proportion of projects uh, performed by a single entity, both in wave and tidal. The organizations involved in the consortium are mainly industrial research and development, but also academic research and development and manufacturing organizations, more or less equally distributed between wave and tidal sectors, only uh, the marine operations organizations are much more involved in the wave sector than in the tidal one. We also found technology transfer among the projects which has have answered our survey, uh, much more, uh, more in wave than in tidal. We also have more projects in wave than in tidal. And the delivery sectors for that technology transfer were the wind energy in general and the offshore wind in particular, composites, manufacturing, aerospace se sector, industrial automation and oil and gas. Um, the, mod the funding of the projects comes from public sector, private funds in debt, and the percentage split among these in combination in many cases, most cases, and the percentage split uh, is, varies between that percentage here indicated, which encompass wave and tidal, and in fact, they correspond to wave because the tidal ranges are within these ranges. Public sector funds are well received in all projects in this proportion, in, this, uh, in several combinations, which are here represented, of several combinations of member state funding and European funding, coordinated private, uh, we can see that uh, um, on in our sample, which is not very high, it happens that a combination of member state and private funding happen only in the wave sector, and the combination of member state and European uh, funding appear only in the tidal sector. Moving now for, for into the technology uh, analysis, we have found several technologies in the devices. Now, I will, in, this, in this analysis, we are focusing only projects which uh, were devoted to develop a device or so device projects. And uh, in the case of Tidal, uh, the most often technologies found were Tidal Kite and horizontal axis turbine. And in the case of Wave, were attenuated oscillating wave surge converter, point absorber, and oscillating water column. Uh, in the case of installation technologies, uh, this analysis focuses both wave and tidal with the color code you can see. 
uh, the most uh, frequent installation town found was floating, tout moored in wave, followed by uh, Smith tout moored and fixed gravity bays, and not so often then the exclusive in tidal floating slack moored. Um, we also question uh, the development areas addressed now in both device projects and subsystem projects. And uh, um, those areas correspond to the priority challenges for ocean energy published in the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda of 2020 by ETIP Ocean. We can see that they are more or less distributed among wave and tidal. We're just uh, noticing that uh, uh, um, the development of novel wave energy devices was reported only in the wave sector as well as the quantifying and demonstrating grid scale benefits of ocean energy. And the standardization and certification is also much more in wave uh, addressed than in tidal. And in the case of the tidal sector, of course, the improvement of tidal blades in the water was only in the tidal, but also marine observation and modeling to optimize design was more addressed in tidal than in wave, the rest are more or less equivalent. Now, in terms of performance metrics of the device, this analysis again based only on device development projects. Our classification is split amongst uh, the categories I have mentioned initially, which is which are smaller scale devices, power less than 0.1 megawatt, larger scale devices and technology hybrids. And uh, uh, I must say that to um, unify favoring getting information in the same measurement units and to put developers more comfortable in providing this kind of information. Data was asked in terms of ranges, uh, which we were given in the survey, and was asked in terms of uh, target and achieved data. Target means uh, the metrics that are expected to be achieved by the end of the project. And the achieved is uh, the information that uh, was obtained so far in the project. Uh, as we will see, we will be reporting just the target data. In fact, many of devices are still under deployment phase and the target is uh, what uh, the most of developers can only be providing now. We have also had some achieved data but it was uh, it is scarce, and for anonymity reasons, we will not be we will not be presenting it. We also will be presenting estimated metrics. Um, each value provided by each uh, in each response uh, was assigned by averaging the maximum and the minimum in the range, and uh, the metrics we will be presenting here were obtained by average, averaging those individual values. We will be uh, deploying, uh, displaying uh, non-available information when that uh, was considered insufficient, which happens when was not available at all, or when the few data available will not, uh, will allow a possible, uh, possibly an identification of the device. So starting by the smaller scale devices, which uh, correspond to projects with uh, less than one megawatt, 0.1 megawatt. Uh, we can see here a division of information between the wave and tidal sectors. Uh, unfortunately, not available, the level as cost of energy. In the case of tidal, uh, average annual energy production uh, is not also available, but uh, I could. Um, uh, informed that if we consider one project from uh, which provided information last year, 2019, we could make an average and uh, the value will be around 300 uh, megawatt hour, uh, euro uh, per megawatt hour. Sorry, it is the level of energy information. Uh, also can add that the uh, Costs for wave are a bit inflated by one project that has much more values than the others. Uh, but this is the information that uh, at the moment we can provide 
because we are not completely sure if it is really much of an outlier or uh, uh, information uh, which is typical. We need, we need more information to conclude that. In the case of large scale devices, we, could, we had enough information this year to be providing here ranges, uh, which is more uh, informative to you, which are more informative. Um, we are also considering here, in all cases, only 2020 information. How have we have in this third year of the project historical information available? Uh, we could follow the path of information provided by the same project year after year, in some cases. And uh, um, we can say that uh, in some cases, the information uh, was consistently decreasing, in other cases, increasing, increasing or decreasing, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because it means that the developer in the meanwhile has gained experience. And since those are target costs, it has this year a uh, more accurate uh, estimation of their costs. So we really are um, happy to be presenting a third year result and we hope to be continuing assessing uh, each year more uh, accurate information. So we have these values uh, and in case of the levelized cost of energy for tidal, not enough information provided uh, to present an average. However, if we consider uh, historical information, we could say that uh, we would uh, indicate a value in average between 200 and 250 euros per megawatt hour. Technology hybrids, which, are, which we are here considering, are a, mixing, a mix between wave technology air, uh, and wind, uh, solar, or off-grid application. Um, however, we had not this year information uh, on tidal uh, projects enough to uh, present um, uh, an average including only tidal from this year. So if we include the uh, hybrid with tidal also from last year, we would be able to present this kind of information. Considering only information from this year, we will be able to present it's just for the wave sector, and it will be uh, these uh, metrics as we can see here. We also had questions concerning standards on technical specifications and uh, um, um, uh, performance evaluation. In the case of technical specifications, which are draft technical standards for the ocean technology uh, in, we, and uh, since they are in development, we ask as a technology developer if you will be engaged with the process of creating those specifications. And the majority of questions of answers were yes, both in tidal and wave sectors. Asking if you, they feel that technical specifications will benefit the sector currently, uh, both in wave and tidal, the majority of responses were yes. And asking if, uh, when carry out the performance certification, uh, what will be the method? Most of the projects indicated that it will be performed by accredited certification in test bodies, and followed in this um, in percentage by a performance performed by the developer, but also uh, in some cases by the client or investor. Now we get into the final part. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's actually we are running very late. So maybe if we can just uh, go to the conclusion because we are running late and we have one okay. presentation more, sorry. Okay, in this case, uh, I will ask you to try to see later the slides because I had a lot of suggestions here. We tried to be encompassing in presenting the suggestions obtained. Uh, so uh, uh, I would like just to, uh, I, I hope you are having a look and later on too. So I would like in this case just to thank you for your attention and in particular uh, to those who have contributed along the three years of this survey. 
uh, thank you very much developers for your effort and your courage and thank you very much all uh, thank you Anne, and sorry for i mean i mean i mean going to the conclusion very soon actually all the presentation will be also put online on the ocean set website so uh, all the attendees can take the all the presentation from our uh, website now we go to the last presentation that are more on let's say practical uh, uh, information and also practical um, exercise, let's say. So the presentation would be given by Tim Horst from Wave Energy Scotland. The title is Update on the Europe Wave Pre-Commercial Procurement Program and the upcoming Wave Energy Project being selected to progress the ocean energy sector. So please, Tim, the floor is yours. Thanks, Jan Maria. Um, if I could just get Victor to share my slides. I'm having trouble here. Maybe, I don't know, Victor, can you yeah. show the slides? One second. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick five-minute uh, overview of the Europe Wave project and uh, how far we've got with the project. So, Europe Wave project is a pre-commercial procurement project for wave energy development. It's funded under Horizon 2020, the low-cost, low-carbon energy supply uh, program, has a budget of 22. 0.7 billion pounds and will last for around 65 months. That's up until May 2026. Uh, if we go to the next slide. The partners in the project is Wave Energy Scotland, which is a, a, a public sector Scottish government funded organisation in Scotland with the, the objective of developing wave energy technology. Uh, the Basque Energy Agency, which is the Basque government's agency for delivering energy policy, and Ocean Energy Europe, which is the industry's um, association in Europe for ocean energy. If you go to the next slide. So the, the overarching challenge for Europe Wave is to design, develop, and demonstrate cost-effective wave energy converters, uh, and particularly those that can survive in an ocean environment. Go to the next slide. So for the PCP challenge, if you like, each PCP has a challenge. It is to advance promising wave energy converter systems to the point that they can be commercially exploited. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, Europe Wave is in three phases. Um, just to give you a bit more uh, background on pre-commercial procurement, pre-commercial procurement is a competitive development process. What that means is that a number of technologies are brought into a program, they're funded to do some development, and then the best technologies are taken forward to another phase of development. In this case, we have three phases, concept development, uh, design and modeling, and then um, operation, deployment, and testing. So you can see there, those are the three phases in, in the Europe Wave project. To start with, we will have seven contracts, seven technologies coming in at phase one, and they'll do seven months of development. At the end of that, we will select the best five technologies that will go forward to phase two, design and modeling. That will last for nine months. And from that, the best three technologies will go through to the final stage, the biggest stage, which is 33 months of designing, developing, installing, and operating a wave device in real sea conditions. Okay, let's go to the next stage. Uh, that's a timeline uh, to show where we are, um, showing the three phases, one after another. We have now carried out the evaluation and we have selected out of a large number of applications, 
the best seven technologies uh, and the announcements were made earlier this week uh, to go forward um, into the program. So if we go to the next slide, I won't, through, I won't read through them all, but those are the seven uh, winning technologies that will, will compete within the Europe Wave program. And we'll be aiming to get them onto contract early next year and start phase one. Okay, that's it from me. Any questions? Thank you, Tim. So mm, I think that now there's time for, for questions. And uh, we have some questions for actually uh, each of you. And, but in any case, I have to say, I invite all the attendees to, to put the, the, their questions on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the chat. Okay, questions are, are, are coming. So uh, the first question is just for team. And uh, the question is how many projects applied for Europe Wave in the first phase? Uh, there were 36 applicants. So um, it was a very competitive uh, program, a lot of very good uh, applications, and we were able to select seven and, good projects from there. And could you say more about the evaluation phase? So how clean is the or transparent is the evaluation phase? Yeah, I mean, with any sort of um, program like this, we want it to be as open and transparent as possible. So. When we published the tender for Europe Wave, uh, we published the, the marking scheme that would be used um, to, to, to mark all the, the, the applications, uh, right down to the, the, the weighting that would be applied to each of the, uh, of the scores. So it was quite clear what you needed to do and what you were marked for. And then we put together a panel of, of experts that did the evaluation that included six uh, independent independent of the organizations within Europe Wave, independent experts, and they all independently carried out an evaluation. And then we ranked all of the, the applicants uh, on their scores, including an assessment of, of cost and value for money. And that's how we, how we selected the, the seven projects. So it was open, transparent, and as independent as we could make it. Thank you, very good team. And uh, I mean, some questions for, uh, for Rachel. So the, the first one is, is it possible to get a copy of the annual report? So yeah, hard copies haven't been published for a while, but the first and second annual reports are on oceanset.eu, our website. And then when the third annual report is published, we'll put that on the website as well, oceanset.eu, and it will be available there in PDF format. Thank you. And also uh, um, for you, Rachel, a more, let's say, technical question. Uh, there seems to be a drop in the amount uh, actually spent by member states in the ocean energy in 2020. Uh, why, can you explain these numbers? Yeah, so that's when I showed the, um, the 29 million and the 30.8 million. The, the next slide that I showed explains some of that. So sometimes it's not a drop, it's actually that just that there's a little bit less data. So we can go back and clarify that, but it does look like the spend is actually a little bit higher for 2020. Um, Anna was thanking the developers there for responding to surveys. And I'd like to thank the member states as well for responding to the surveys and for the information you give us. We're only as good as the data we get so if there is a little gap in the data of the, the, the following year, then it can look as if there's a drop, but sometimes that's not the case. It's just there's a little less data to work on. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. And uh, now uh, the big question for Anna, actually. So is it simple to get information from the developers? So how difficult it is to get the information? Say? And how important it is to have reliable information? It has been a challenge. It, it is uh, difficult for the developer, uh, which is afraid of providing data. We understand that. and uh, um, But I think it is possible to see that we 
have efforts to preserve anonymity. Um, in fact, uh, uh, there is uh, people who answer in some years, other years they don't, uh, but we will continue trying and we hope uh, we get more adhesion year after year. This year we have got more adhesion, so I think that difficulty is decreasing. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And now we have a, a couple of questions more for team. The first one is, it looks like some of the projects selected are outside the scope of the tender. It has devices that have been tested previously um, and not new. How do you explain this? Um, that, well, because it's not the case. Um, we, 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 we would accept technologies that have been tested previously if there was some uh, additional innovation that meant that meant that they could um, increase their performance. So it wasn't just for new technologies; it was for um, new new systems, if you like. Um, so uh, if you if you read the text of the uh, of the tender, you'll find that that is that is the case, and um, everything there has new and innovative features, and um, will you know has the potential to impact on the level of cost of energy of wave energy which is the key thing thanks thank you team and actually we have again another questions for you this means that so most of the attendees maybe are developers so they are very interesting in the europe wave let's say project so the question is will the, the technology evaluation be made available to the public um no, I mean, for, for most of the, um, the applicants, their, their, their information is confidential. So we can't go releasing comments or uh, bits of, it, of technical information. Um, it's very important when someone applies um, to a project like this, they understand and they, they, they can be certain that, that none of their information uh, is, is, is released. And we have confidentially, confidentiality clauses with all our uh, independent assessors uh, and it's very important for us that that is very tightly controlled and the information about developers technology is not released so no okay thank you team and we are very close to the end of the workshop so a very quick questions for uh, uh, rachel are there any plan to continue ocean set as this is the final year yeah, we've already started our application with the help of OEE on OceanSet 2, so that will be submitted in the new year and it will be joined by um, ETIP as well this time, as well as the original uh, OceanSet partners. The emphasis again will be on data collection and um, analysis, but with a little bit more um, closely working with industry and an element of community engagement as well. So that's in process, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. So uh, now we are at the very end of the, the workshop. I can say thank you again to all the panelists and uh, the attendees. And again, for the attendees, please uh, remember that the action plan, the new action plan can be downloaded from the CETIS webpage of the European Commission. So if you want to know about the new action plan for the ocean energy at EU level, please download the, the, the document. So thank you to everybody for attending this workshop and see you maybe next year. Ciao.